everybody. Welcome to the Zip Farm. Today we want to talk to you guys about pollination, bees, and some of our fruiting crops. Pollination is a pretty important factor in the Zip Farm because it can both increase your yields and also in cases like strawberries, improve the fruit quality significantly. Let's go to the whiteboard and just take a look at some of the science behind pollination before we get started. To further understand how pollination works, I'm going to explain it through the diagram of reproductive biology in a flower. So in a flower, there's basically male parts and female parts per se. The male parts are composed of an anther and a filament uh, that's called the stamen overall, and then the female parts involve a stigma, a style, and an ovary. The anther is where pollen is produced. So pollen is produced on the tips of the anthers, and to pollinate a flower successfully, the pollen needs to move from the anthers to the stigma. Once it reaches the stigma, it grows a root down into the ovary, and the flower is pollinated or fertilized, and this grows into your fruit. Some plants have mechanisms to prevent fertilizing themselves, to increase genetic diversity. Some of these mechanisms are timing, so the pollen will not be released at the same time that the stigma, its stigma is receptive to pollen. Other methods are that they actually just will reject pollen from their own plant, so it encourages it to be pollinated by plants around it. This is where bees are important, because they'll move from flower to flower, from plant to plant, to increase the genetic diversity, but it'll also improve the quality of your flower sometimes, and your, your fruit, as well as your yield. Other crops, such as strawberries, have a little bit different of a process, so we'll go over that next. Normally, you pollinate the stigma and it would produce the seed inside of the fruit. Strawberries are what you call a compound fruit, so they actually produce their seed on the outside of the fruit. What that means is there's multiple stigmas and anthers all around the outside of the flower, or inside the flower rather, on the outside of the ovary. Each of these stigmas needs to be pollinated to get successful pollination across the plant, and there's multiple anthers producing pollen all around the outside. This is where bees are really effective because they fly in, they vibrate, and they're looking for nectar in the bottom of the plant. And at the same time, they're pollinating all the way around the plant, which is very difficult to do even by hand sometimes. The bees we've ordered are uh, actually from Copert. So um, the hive is called a Natripol Excel. Uh, the, these bees are actually bumblebees. We like bumblebees in the farm because they're very non-aggressive and they're actually very good pollinators. A lot of people talk about honeybees, but bumblebees are better suited to an indoor environment. Specifically, this is um, Bombus and Patience, which is the native bumblebee to this area. It's important to buy from a reputable source because you don't want to um, affect native populations of bees. These are lab-grown bees, so they aren't taken from the wild. However, they are a native species, so we aren't in introducing an invasive species here. It is important, though, that you um, keep your room as sealed as possible to prevent any diseases from outbreaking and then getting into native bee populations. You also um, you want to change this hive out every six to eight weeks just to prevent disease outbreak. And once the hive gets to a certain size, they will actually either swarm or, um, and start to outgrow this and become maybe more aggressive. So it's recommended you really swap it out after that time. Um, this hive is pretty interesting because you have a door system on the front of it. So you can use the slider on the front to move from one door, two doors, and then back down to one door. And the way that works is one door um, open allows the bees only to enter the hive. Uh, two doors allows them to enter and exit, and then the last door is actually just for them to exit. Um, this gives you a bit of control because the bees do follow the lighting schedule, so if you do want to contain them to the hive and have people into your farm, that's, that's totally possible. Um, when the hive arrives, it is sealed in the box. You do actually have to remove the hive from inside. It is sealed, and then you um, open a sugar water uh, wick so they have access to sugar water while they're in the hive. Um, this is just additional food source for them, provides energy, and if there's an absence of nectar or pollen in the farm, uh, the hive can keep on um, surviving and doing its thing uh, while you're waiting for your crops to start flowering. Coper does recommend that you keep this hive about 20 centimeters minimum off the ground. This is because ants will actually get into your uh, hive and start using the sugar water. Um, you also want to aim your hive uh, opening towards the crop so that they can see the daylight switch when the lights come on and turn off and it helps them um, be most active and, and find the flowers a lot easier. If your farm's not big enough to justify bees or you're uncomfortable with having bees released in your farm, you can pollinate by hand. This can be done with either a toothbrush or a paintbrush. Some people actually use a vibrating toothbrush because it mimics the vibration of a bumblebee in the flower. You can simply take the, the brush, go into the flower, and pull a little bit of the pollen around and then do it to the next flower and along and along until you've pollinated your crops. This is, however, quite time consuming and that is why we use bumblebees in the farm. Another common myth we hear quite a bit about pollination is that if you have crops of similar species together and they cross pollinate, that it's going to affect the quality of the final fruit. This is definitely a myth. It's, it's heard a lot about with cucumbers and melons and that your melons will taste bland if they're pollinated by squash or cucumbers. 
cross-pollination and the genetic change and the characteristics in the fruit doesn't happen until the next generation. So the actual fruit is always going to be the same phenotype, the same characteristics of the mother. It's the seed that carries the next generation's genes on. So, for example, um, with peppers here as well, um, you're not going to see a change between cross-pollination of peppers in the fruit. You're going to see it in the seed of the next plant grown. As you can see here in the zip farm, we use pollinators and increase the quality and the quantity of our fruiting crops significantly. If you have any questions about pollinators or how to use them in your farm, feel free to reach out to us with an email or a comment to ask your questions.